Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Mohammad Riaz, a journalist and a research scholar. We are going to discuss about basically uh, whatever happened in Malda and then the broader question of what is what are the priorities of the Indian Muslim community, what is their situation today and what's the way ahead. Hello Riaz, we are glad to have you Hello. on News Click. Can you just throw some light whatever happened in Malda and people have been claiming that I mean it's it's a communal violence that took place and why is the so-called secular media or the secular parties not critiquing it? In Malda basically what, what began uh, was a protest uh, against what Kamlesh Tiwari uh, suspended or disgruntled uh, member of Hindu Mahasabha said something obnoxious against Prophet Muhammad and that was again in reaction to what Azam Khan had said, had said to the uh, to RSS, RSS to RS people uh, in general. Uh, so he said, and th this was, mind you, uh, more than a month Mind's ago. Better. On I think on December first or something like that, he said something. And since then, there have been uh, it uh, protest began it uh, Indor, Bijnor, Muzaffarnagar. In Muzaffarnagar, um, roughly one lakh people had gathered. In Bijnor, also more than a lakh people assembled. Similarly, Indore, even in Bangalore, a very cosmopolitan city. Otherwise, uh, there was huge protest. So this news gradually reached the interiors uh, of the country and uh, there is a, a Barelvi sect group, Idare Sariya, which called a protest. Uh, this pro in this protest, it was in police were informed beforehand, um, but still there was not adequate uh, uh, security. security and roughly according to reports, one point, uh, more than a lakh people had gathered and a section of these protesters is believed to be had um, gone amok and they uh, actually what st according to reports what happened that there were a scuffle between BSF, BSF uh, people and the personnel protesters. and protesters and many people thought that firing was actually done by police and they went to the pol local police station and bur burnt police vehicles and it's this police station is look basically in a Hindu dominated, dominated locality and so some of the shops and some uh, were also uh, ransacked, rans and ransacked and burned and some people also got injured. So what started initially was not a, a so communal a protest, protest uh, yeah. but it took some communal color, we cannot deny this. And since then more than what happened on it was uh, you can say an accident maybe, a protest which uh, turned violent. violent. Uh, which has now been politicized. So Trinamool has jumped in and you know that it happened in Malda district which is Congress's stronghold, Gani Khan Chaudhary's fiefdom you can say. But now elections are around the corner and so uh, Congress, Trinamool, BJP has entered uh, and also these elements, criminal elements who are involved in smuggling uh, and other such criminal activities. So it's, it was a protest which went out of hand, um, perhaps because of some criminal elements, uh, which is now being politicized. Uh, but mind you also, Bengal has this history of uh, political violence, violence. Uh, between earlier between uh, left and Congress and then between uh, left Trinamu and the like Trinamul. Yeah. So this is not something new for Bengal, but it, it is now being communalized. Trinamul is playing to such such, such galleries to certain people. Now BJP is sniffing an opportunity to enter. M mind you, th where this happened, BJP has a small pockets of a strongholds. Cool. RSS so organization RSS RSS organization active organization and some there. of some of the these local panchayat level uh, panchayat heads are mm -hmm. also uh, from BJP. And protests turning violent is not something new to our country. You mentioned about Patidas, Gujars when they were demanding uh, reservation in Rajasthan and uh, Jats uh, in uh, Western Uttar Pradesh and other parts of the country. And so there have been like when uh, say a lakh or more than a lakh people gather, gather at a place. Uh, uh, there are uh, always chances of some, uh, some of them going uh, turning violent and the, uh, it's also the failure of the complicit uh, failure of uh, our security forces uh, or uh, perhaps at the behest of the political forces. So, but when it involves say Jats, Gujars, Patidas, so then we don't tend to see it through the lens of communalization. Actually this also has to do with the broader 
uh, broader theme of Islamophobia that we talk about, which is, I mean, which is raising its voice, which is gaining its ground, especially when since the current government has come into power. But can you throw some light on this entire uh, propaganda of Islamophobia that we are seeing today in the society? Somebody is entering inside somebody's house and claiming that he is eating beef, which is none of his business. So, I mean, it has to do with how a uh, situation of fear is being created among the majority community regarding the minority community. Islamophobia is, uh, uh, it has always been there in, in s to some extent, but post 9-11 we see uh, uh, this Islamophobia at its peak and especially when incidents like say Paris attack Attacks, happens yeah. or when we see gory videos of Charlie, uh, of Hebdo. Charlie Hebdo or when we uh, say gory videos of how uh, ISIL terrorists are uh, beheading, beheading uh, some journalist or someone from the West, uh, any, any citizen for that matter. So uh, that Islamophobia has certainly uh, is very high at the moment uh, across the world and not just in India. Uh, Having said that, the very co the core ideology of uh, the Sangh Parivar, the Hindutva forces, uh, is very anti-Muslim. Muslim. So uh, there is a global context to it, and there is also Indian context. So it did not start with 9/11. It the core ideology of the the Sangh Parivar is very much embedded in this uh, anti-Muslim the uh, anti-Muslim sentiments and if you read uh, there is beautiful book by uh, Devesh Anand on how uh, this uh, fear of the other uh, has been made uh, among uh, and the other here of course is Muslim and so s Hindu in this country are in majority and they are in overwhelming majority they are sev almost 70 percent and uh, still there is this fear has been created that uh, if Hindu do not unite and do not stand up uh, to fight for their rights, m m Muslims who are according to 2011 census 14.2%, they would take over this country once again. Yeah, actually when you quote about the 2011 census, there has been a very interesting f uh, data about it when we talk about the census on base of religious lines. So I remember newspaper headlines claiming that uh, Actually, in reality, the population, the Muslim population was growing at much slower rate than that of the Hindu population. But it was presented in newspaper as if Muslim population was growing at a higher rate. This is how this anti-Muslim politics works. So, like say, uh, you are mentioning about um, the census. So, take for example, uh, uh, states of states like Assam and uh, West Bengal, uh, which are bordering states which border with Bangladesh. So, and there are people in, in both these states who are Bengali speaking, both Hindus and Muslims. Like say in Malda, uh, majority of them are Muslims. So, but the, both Hindu and Muslim they speak Bengal. And also in Assam, there are large number of Muslims and some um, percentage of Hindus also who are of Bengali origin. So, uh, and they are uh, again also uh, the level of education is. Uh, uh, at miserably low, uh, abysmally low condi uh, condition they the live and the economic unemployment. Uh, uh, unemployment, economic condition and I have vis uh, for, uh, for reporting purpose I visited many of those districts and the situation there is very poor and uh, all economic data show from uh, across the world that uh, when uh, socio-economic condition is bad and when uh, level of uh, literacy and education is low, so the chances are that the family size would be big. When level of education is high, family size would be generally, generally tends to be low. Mm -hmm. This uh, fact is often ignored when they mention about how uh, population is increases, not very high, but yes, there is certain increase in say in Assam, in percentage terms, there might be in some districts the population increases, but they always ignore this socio-economic factor, and because they border Bangladesh, they always bring this is issue of illegal migration. Not to say that there is no illegal migration; uh, migration is a very natural process, uh, but to they always create this. Uh, again, uh, phobia of how uh, uh, Assam will have uh, Muslim CM so one day and how As uh, Assam will, will become a Muslim majority state and f fears like that is be created. Uh, when you talk about socio-economic conditions, I mean that brings, to me, brings me to an important question that even the Muslim community there on the streets claiming it to be a blasphemous statement, 
but when 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 they have to talk about their basic rights right for education employment or even implementation of the such a committee report we have never seen such a massive mobilization on the streets on part of the muslim community also i wrote an article uh, in this regarding this in fact uh, uh, and what, uh, I titled it as misplaced priorities of the Muslims. So, uh, as you rightly pointed out, in, in socio-economic terms, according to such a committee report, in fact, and, se and several subsequent reports, the uh, 2013 post such a assessment report mm -hmm. by uh, Professor Amitabh Kundu, uh, so they all point to how the condition of m most Muslims, majority of the Muslims, uh, is absolutely low. Uh, uh, some uh, sometimes. Uh, Worse than Dalits, uh, or it's, it's comparable to SCs and STs, in fact, uh, according to all these reports. But we don't, as you rightly pointed out, we don't see protest uh, for on uh, for e economic empowerment, for social justice, uh, for when large number of Muslim youth are arrested on arbitrary charges. charges. When commun uh, I mentioned about how uh, in post this Kamlesh Tiwari quote unquote blasphemous act. Uh, there was protest uh, besides Malda in uh, also in Muzaffarnagar. Muzaffarnagar saw in 2013 sep September 2013 one of the worst communal rights in his in recent history. And we, I, I I have reported from there uh, and visited that Muzaffarnagar five six times. I have not come across and I checked with my friends. Uh, I have not uh, Muzaffarnagar did not see a single protest of s where. S even 10,000 people could gather, except vic families of victims. So, like there was some protest when families of victims gathered and they staged protest. But other than that, uh, and mind you, the, from these districts, several of the MLAs are Muslims and are currently representing government in in the state. Still, we did not see any huge protest like of this uh, scale. Uh, whether in Muzaffarnagar or for that matter for social justice, for reservations. I don't know of any Muslim group uh, who organized a protest or a conference, in, like conference of, um, of a sta st stage that could attract government attention. There might have been some talks at local levels, but not at national levels or uh, could gather people who demanding their own rights. Actually, when you talk about all these things, especially in the post-1991 new, new economic reforms period, when there has been a massive industrialization, uh, pro-corporate policies, there's actually a shift towards class. I mean, when you talk about Muslims being compared to Dalits, it's, it's more on the basis of the class which they belong to, rather than the, it's more of the socio-economic status which they come from. So, I mean, there is, has been no concrete step, steps in that terms also. And the parties like Samajwadi Party in Uttar Pradesh, who have been, who have claimed to be the Messiah of the Muslims. And who, by the way, in, during last election, they promised to give reservations to Muslims, Muslims on those yeah. backgrounds, on those uh, grounds. But they have they not have been miserably failed. They Muslims. have miserably, they have miserably failed. It, it's in fact, Mulayam Singh was, uh, was has been called in past as Mullah Mulayam. Um, but it was during his son's uh, tenure that the, one of the worst communal acts happened, and it was Mulayam Singh who compared the those people who were living, who were forced to live uh, in relief camps with beggars and with uh, uh, thieves. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, and in fact, in fact, uh, Mulayam Singh has failed. Mis Mul it's not Mulayam Singh, but Samajwadi Party government has failed miserably to cater to um, the needs of the Muslims. Uh, and we saw the result in Lok Sabha elections. Like there was huge anger, and the, not just anger, there was confusion among Muslims. And there is still this con confusion, which is uh, uh, I'm more worried about how this confusion, because Muslims in this country have tried the Congress for several decades, and post uh, Babri Masjid uh, demolition, there was shift to these regional parties who claim to be the champions of the. Uh, like in uh, West Bengal, in Bihar, in West Bengal it was left, in uh, Bihar and UP, MY, Muslim and Yadav combinations worked, or some other combination which always had Muslim, sizable Muslim voters. But even they have largely failed. In uh, like one credit that goes to Lalu Prasad in Bihar that he gave security to the Muslims, but it ended with security. But this is also this failure of 
political leadership and also community leadership is leading to uh, extreme sense of alienation. Uh, you see ghettoization, it's, by, it's a national phenomenon, it's, it's happening in all communities in many ways. Uh, what we tend to, what we call cosmopolitan cities also being ghettoized into pockets of uh, uh, on different parameters, parameters, not just religious but also regional. So you have RK Puram for South Indians and you have Punjabi Bagh for Punjabis. But the sad part is that our community leaders are generally busy, like say leaders like Azam Khan, uh, leaders like Akbaruddin Awasi, they are busy in uh, in same sort of rebel rousing which we accuse uh, other uh, on the other side of the spectrum, the Hindutva groups doing. And the clerics seem to be somewhere still living uh, in their own world uh, and they are not aware about uh, the changes happening around them, the socio-political uh, changes which are happening around them I and which is a dangerous sign. I point out that there is misplaced priorities of our leadership, whether political, secular leaders or religious leaders. Uh, but outside the community also I feel uh, that there is certain, some amount of uh, 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 ignorance if not prejudice. And so they tend to, to see Muslim as Muslim community as a whole, as, as if it's a homogeneous. Uh, I'm not saying these protests are uh, right or wrong because in democracy they anyway have the right to, to protest, protest as long as they are peaceful. But yes, I agree with you uh, that uh, these, whichever Jamaat it is, they have largely failed to A, uh, modernize the Madarsa. Uh, B, Madrasa uh, only means educational institution. So, but the Madrasa, when we talk about Madrasa today, uh, it's m largely religious schools where only religious education are imparted. So, they have A, largely failed to, there are some exceptions, uh, like say in Kerala, uh, there is Muslim Education Society mm -hmm. who run uh, like both secular educations mm -hmm. and uh, religious, uh, they impart religious education and secular educations but by and large in north india in large parts of the country uh, muslims have failed to these muslim groups have failed to modernize madrasa they have failed to give uh, women adequate rights right. uh, uh, they have even the muslim personal law board and uh, all the members of the muslim personal law board most of them are the same old members and uh, uh, you hardly see a representation of women uh, young voices in the personal law board. Uh, they have failed on those counts, but uh, crash generalization and, uh, uh, would also not be fair. Thanks, Riaz, for giving us your time. And as the issue proceeds, we'll be coming back to you on such issues. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you for watching News Club.